Hi boys and girls. We're back again this week for some work in reading. This week in reading we're going to be focusing on a book titled What If There Were No Gray Wolves? Now last week we read about the grassland ecosystem with the bees being the keystone species. This week we're going to be focusing on the temperate forest ecosystem and learning about the keystone species, the gray wolf. Again, this book was written by Suzanne Slade and illustrated by Carol Schwartz. Have that paper and pencil ready so you can stop and jot along the way if you need to. I will read each page and then as I finish, I'll pause for a moment so you can take a closer look at the illustrations. The illustrations are very important to this book as they are most books, but it really helps us understand the facts that our author is trying to teach us. What if there were no gray wolves? A book about the temperate forest ecosystem. Gray wolves are the kings of the temperate forest. They hunt and howl between the leafy trees, and they share their wooded home with all sorts of feathered and furry creatures, from the tiniest songbird to the biggest moose. It's critical. Gray wolves can weigh between 50 and 130 pounds. All living things in the temperate forest ecosystem depend on each other for food. Plants and animals are connected to one another in a food chain. A gray wolf might dine on a deer for dinner. Deer graze on green plants. When many food chains connect, they form a food web. It's critical. Sometimes a plant or animal species is so important that without it, many other species would become extinct. It's called a keystone species. Gray wolves are a keystone species. Keystone species help make sure an ecosystem has many different types of life in it. So you can see the plants and the smaller animals towards the bottom of the food chain into the food web. And then you can also see those arrows show us how they connect to each other, how the plants and animals do depend on each other. That's what makes it an ecosystem. They depend on each other. Gray wolves have an important job at the top of their food chain. They can eat up to 20 pounds of meat at one meal. A lone wolf may hunt rabbits, beavers, and other small mammals. A pack of wolves will hunt bigger animals, such as moose, elk, bison, and white-tailed deer. It's critical. Gray wolves are meat eaters or carnivores. They need meat to survive. Wolves use their keen sense of smell to hunt for their meals. It's critical. Today, states with large numbers of gray wolves may choose to allow wolf hunting for short periods of time. Gray wolves don't need to fear other animals, but they do have to watch out for people. At one time, people had killed so many wolves that the wolves nearly disappeared. Then the U.S. government passed laws to protect wolves, and the animal's population began to grow. Today, hunters and ranchers wanting to protect their cattle are threats. So are people who destroy the wolves' homes to build new houses and businesses. What would happen if gray wolves became extinct? Without gray wolves, the animals they eat would begin to fill the forest. This would be especially true for larger prey, such as white-tailed deer. Deer have few predators besides wolves. It's critical. Mountain lions also hunt white-tailed deer. However, few mountain lions still remain in the forest. Hunters and people building new houses have destroyed the lion's home. So take a look here. The author and illustrator work together to blacken out that gray wolf. So here we see an illustration form of the gray wolf being extinct. As more and more white-tailed deer filled this forest, this leafy place would change. Deer like to graze on leaves, crunchy twigs, nuts, berries, and plant buds. Before long, hungry white-tailed deer would eat nearly all ground level plants. 
So with too many deer, they would be eating too many of the plants. It's critical. Plants use sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water to make their own food. The food making process is called photosynthesis. Other forest animals such as birds, squirrels, and moose eat plants too. Mice and rabbits use plants for protection, hiding in thick bushes or beneath leaves. If white-tailed deer ate all the plants, these animals would either starve or become easy prey for meat eaters. It's critical. When white-tailed deer can't find enough forest plants, they're often forced to cross busy roads to find food. Many deer cause vehicle accidents and are killed. So here you're seeing some of the effects of too many deer because there's no gray wolves to hunt them. Soon the deer themselves would run out of food. They would disappear along with the smarter, smaller animals. Predators such as owls, coyotes, and foxes would face a food shortage of their own. Without a supply of meat, these animals couldn't survive. It's critical. Great gray owls make their homes in forest trees. About 90% of their meals come from small rodents such as mice and gophers. Without gray wolves, temperate forests would become quiet, empty places. No birds filling the air with song, no squirrels scampering across the forest floor, no rabbits or mice rustling in the bushes. And take a look at the difference in this forest. The author and illustrator are working together to show you the effects. What would happen if gray wolves became extinct? More than you might think. The loss of one animal, such as the mighty gray wolf, would have a big effect on temperate forests. And here the author ended with a map. Take a close look at that map, and then I'm going to read the text box that explains it to us. So here you can see in orange is the gray wolf range. It says, gray wolves live in many kinds of ecosystems, not just forest. They can be found in tundra, mountain, desert, and grassland ecosystems throughout the northern half of the world. Today, people are working hard to protect forest ecosystems around the world. Wildlife workers are also closely watching gray wolves to make sure the food chains in our forests stay healthy and strong. And just like last week, the author ends with some tips on how to keep our forests healthy. So this is going to help you with a question later in the week. Here's some tips. When you visit a forest, be sure to leave it just as you found it. You can keep our forests clean by not littering. Some animals try to eat litter, which can poison them or cause them to choke. If you go camping in a forest, take extra care with campfires. Have an adult help you and don't light fires unless the campground allows them. Light fires only in specially marked areas. Be sure to put out your fire with water before you leave the site. Help save trees by buying recycled paper products. Write on the blank side of used paper. Using less paper means more trees in our forest. And finally, join a wildlife or nature group near you. Many groups offer special events to help protect our forests such as cleanup days. So there we have finished What If There Were No Gray Wolves. Again, you can go back and listen to the reading of this book again to help you with the questions throughout the week. Make sure you do your best work. See you all soon.